Thank you for joining us this evening. We're so glad to be in the house of the Lord. And those that are listening on the internet, we pray that you'll be energized as you hear the word of God that will come forth. I know about this time, some of us are ready to make our snooze, but we thank the Lord, thank the Lord that we're ready to hear good word. Are you ready to hear good word? <laughs> Wake up everybody, time to get up. It's time to hear a great word from Pastor Jason. Let's welcome Pastor Jason. <laughs> All right, good evening, good evening, APRC. <laughs> Thanks for those that are watching as well. It's always an awesome and exciting time to be able to share the Word of God and to be able to take part and be a partaker of God's Word. And um, I thank God that His Word is it's living and it's alive and, it's, and that it's full of power and it's sharper than the double-edged sword and dividing or piercing a center of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And it's even the discerner of the thoughts and intents of our hearts. And the word of God is so amazing of how it can come in and the, the things that it can cut through and the things that it can cut away from your life and the things that it can discern and point out to you to give you hope and to refresh you and to revive you in the midst and every season that, that we go through is, is so awesome. So today we are we're going to be still talking about the goodness of God. I have the title, The Goodness of God, but I have a subtitle called Days Remembered. Again, the goodness of God, but days remembered. You know, what's amazing about God and his goodness is that a lot of times when, when we actually see or we receive the goodness of God, a lot of times we don't even recognize it for what it really is, or when the goodness of God has come, we don't really know for the time that it's been appointed for, if that makes sense. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me quickly to Isaiah chapter 46. I felt like I was kind of fumbling there through my pages, because you know, sometimes you're on your way to one scripture, but then the Holy Spirit directs you to another scripture, you know. <laughs> but I thank God he's the one that orders and orchestrates and orders my steps. He's the one that directs the message. And he chooses what I shall speak and what I shall say as he places it in my heart. So here in Isaiah chapter 46 and verse number three, I'm reading out of the New King James Version tonight with uh, Isaiah 46 and three. And so here in Isaiah chapter 46 and verse number three, it says, listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb, who have been carried from the womb even to your old age, I am he. Even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. To whom, to whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we should be alike? They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver on the scales. They hire a goldsmith and he makes it a god. They prostrate themselves, yes, they worship. They bear it on their shoulder, they carry it, set it in its place and it stands. From its place it shall not move, no one cries out to it, yet it cannot answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Verse 8, remember this, and show yourselves men. Recall to mind, O you transgressors, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, again, from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasures. This is our opening right now tonight. And we're talking about the goodness of God and about the days remembered. And I don't know about you and I don't know where you were when you told God yes. I don't know where you were 
in position where you were in life, where you were in your relationship to God when you said yes. Because when God comes to you and he starts speaking to you and he desires that, hey, come now, come this way, come now, come now, it is time. Come now, there are some things that I want to show you. There are some things that I want to tell you. There are some things that I want you to do for me. But what I'm looking for is a yes. Now, sometimes we are so into details that we want to know why. Or we want to know how long. We want to know where it is. We want to know what the details of it is on what my part in it, of it is. But see, when God is asking for your yes, God is not asking for your yes and for you to know everything that is involved. If you look at the history on how God works with people, if you look at the children of Israel, when he bought them out, instead of taking them straight to the promised land, the Bible speaks and says, instead of him taking them that way, that he took them around, as in the long way. Because it says, lest they see war, lest they see war. So if God is calling you, and he's calling your name, and he's speaking to you, and he's looking for your yes, what God is looking for, he is looking for a willing vessel. Someone who's willing to say yes, no matter what. Someone who's willing to say yes, regardless of your condition or where you are in life or if you don't have enough or you know if you feel like you're not strong enough or if you feel like you're not qualified or if you feel like you know what lord i think you have the wrong address god is only looking for your yes so i don't know if you guys have ever been in that situation you know when you say yes before you even know what you're about to get into <laughs> you know in the army they say never volunteer for nothing because <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> like, I, I need a few volunteers. Nope. And then you find out what it is, like... Just stay. Yes, yes. Yeah, wait for them to choose you. <laughs> <laughs> kind of stay in the back of the formation, you know, so they can't really call you about, you know. But listen, what I'm getting at, as we look back into the scripture real quick, it says, remember this, and show yourselves, man, call to mind all your transgressions transgressors. Remember the former things of old. It says, for I am God and there is no other. It says, I am God. There is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. You know, in the book of uh, Psalms in chapter 139, it speaks of, you know, that God saw our unformed substance. And when God saw our unformed substance, there was something that he saw in us. And it's when he saw that unformed substance that he began to write. And what he began to write was the things that were written about us that he has declared us to be what he saw us and is declaring us to be. See, from ancient times, before there was yet even a foundation, God had already declared who we shall be, what we shall be, how we should do it, and what we are going to do for him as we choose him because he first chose us. That's why we are able to choose him. As the Bible says, we only love him because he first loved us. So now when God calls to us and we say yes, the thing is the beauty of it, God knows that we are not ready yet to accomplish the fullness of what he has already determined that we shall be or what he has already written about us. So God is patient and God is good. And you know, hey, you know, when God first calls us, you know, it's a yes, you know, and then that is when the process begins. And so as the process begins, you know, sometimes, you know, it's a little bit challenging, right? Because there are some things that we have to overcome. There are some things that we have to go through. There are some challenges that we're going to have to face. Because all we hear from the old saints, we hear about how good God is and how God has brought them through. But we don't even see what they went through. What we're looking at is the glory in the latter years of the older saints because they've been through it. You know, but, you know, they don't tell you all the little minute details, right? But we're looking at, Lord God, I want what he has. You better be careful what you're asking for because, you know, we don't know what people have been through in order to get to the place where God has brought them. You know, but there are some things that God has created us to do, and there are some things that God has created us to accomplish, and there are some things that God has set forth already from ancient times. The things that are not yet done, they shall be accomplished just as he has said, just as he has spoken. Now, there's this book I have here. 
I got to show you guys. You're going to see. This is one of many books that I have. But in this book, in this book I have here, these are dreams that I have recorded from God. This is my first dream book. From the time I was nine until uh, I, I got to look at the date to see where this one ended. But there's another one too. But see, there are some things that God has already shown me here in this book. And there are some things that God has already declared to me in this book. Some of these things have already come to pass. And, and the thing I love about dreams is and when God begins to show you things, the thing that I love about it is that he doesn't number them one through 100 as in, in order. Because the way he shows you is not the way you think. It's not the order in which you have the dreams. But he begins to reveal these things to you as you go through the process and as you follow him and as you follow his voice and as you begin to set your heart to accomplish the things that he has set forth and as you desire to change and to be more and more like him things begin to change things begin to move turn me quickly to Jeremiah chapter 33 Jeremiah chapter 33 3 see Jeremiah chapter 33 and 3, the New King James Version. Here it says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I like that. That's good. That's good. But I like how some of the other translations read. See, the New Living Translation says, ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. You see, he says, ask me, and I will tell you. A lot of times in our walk, and as we go on the things of God, and you know, we're, we're seeking and we're desiring to hear more counsel from God, and we're desiring to hear the voice of God, and, and, and we're seeking, we want to hear the voice of God more, and, and you know, so you start to search the scriptures, and I, I remember that this is one of the scriptures that, that I would go to because, you know, I, I desired to hear more from God, you know, because, you know, I, I, I would listen to my mom, and I would listen to her testimonies about her and, and about my grandmother, and, you know, about the different things, you know, that, that they went through, and how they had to call upon God, and, and how the Holy Spirit talked to them, and, 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 and caused them to hear the voice, and, and I remember my grandmother, you know, she's telling me the story, you can never get tired uh, of the stories of the testimony. You know, and, and I remember my grandma, she was like, you know, when she was uh, younger and she had my, my, um, she had my oldest auntie and then she was about to, she was pregnant with the second one. And then right then at that time, she said, you know, we were going through some hard times and, and we, we didn't have much to eat, you know, and then, you know, my, my grandfather at the time, he was like in and out, you know, and you know, they, they were struggling to find something to eat. And so, so, so my grandmother, you know, she had prayed and was talking to God and, and she had said that, hey, listen, the lady, there's a lady, I believe she lived across the street, so she didn't have, you know, any good out for my grandmother. But the Lord tell her, there was a lady that lived across the street. She's going to bring you two plates. Okay. She's going to bring one for my oldest auntie. And she's going to bring one for you. And then the Lord told her, do not eat the one that is for you. But throw that one away, but then eat the one that is for your daughter. But my grandma said that she was so hungry that she forgot about what the Lord said. <laughs> you know, and sometimes, you know, when we're going through it and God tells us some stuff, and you know, the other day, I mean, a few, like two weeks ago, I think I, I had to tell the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, I, I am so sorry. I, I, you know, ask the Holy Spirit for forgiveness because you know, there are some things that, you know, he has always shared and, and you know, sometimes you don't have your book to write it down and, and you're like, man, that's good. And you're like, yes, Lord. And then, you know, two hours later, you forgot about it and, you know, it's gone. You know, it's like, man, you know, like, man that was a good one. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. So, so my book is kind of spotted, you know, <laughs> where it should have detail to detail. You know, now he told me something. I'm like, Lord, I hope you bring it back. My but let me get back to my grandma. So my grandma said she was so hungry. That when the lady came, she ate 
the plate. And then, you know, of course, my auntie ate her plate. And she said, as soon as she finished eating, she heard the voice of the Lord, did I not tell you to eat that plate? <laughs> and then that's when she said she began to feel sick. She was saying, oh, Lord, <laughs> like, help me. She began to feel sick. But what she didn't know was the lady had put poison in there. You know, that's... So my grandma said she was on the ground on her side and just like cramping up and just calling out to God. And she said, I don't know how, but she said she was on her side and she began to spin as in like a, I don't know, a spindle, I guess that's the best way I can do. And she said she began to spin faster and faster. She said, I don't know how I was spinning, but it spin so much that it caused me to throw up everything that I ate. And it all came up, you know. And she said, the honest thing, Sticks in it. So this is down in Louisiana, you know, where you have the black guy, all that, and, you know. But I hear about these testimonies, how God has brought them through, and about how they heard the voice of the Lord. But see, going back to Jeremiah 33, it says, To ask me, and I will tell you remarkable things. In Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about the things to come. Listen to this. I love this about the, the new living because it says, ask me, and I will, and I will. And like I said, this is one of the scriptures that I use to believe and trust that the Spirit of God, that when I ask him, that he will speak. Just like it says, call to me, and I will answer. You know, just like when your mom says, Jay, you know what I better say? Yes, ma'am. Because if I don't, you know, I'm going to get it, right? You know, but listen here. It says, ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets. The thing that's beautiful about a secret, I can't tell you a secret from there because I don't want everyone else to hear it. If I pull the microphone away, see, but it's not going to make any sense. You're going to be like, what did you say? See, but the thing about secrets, you have to come closer to the person that is telling the secret. you got to draw close enough to proximity where you and only the person detailing the secret to you can hear or know what the secret is about. And the scripture says that it's remarkable secrets about things that you do not know and about things that are to come. And now when you look at 33.3, also in the Amplified Classic, it says, to call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, fenced in and hidden. You know, sometimes you have gates, you know, you want to know what's on the other side. You know, like, okay, we, we, we have a gate, a fence right here. You know, you can't see through it. But if you saw on the other side, you can tell I'm not a landscaper. I let my grass die. It is dying, okay? It is dead, okay? I don't water my grass. I don't like landscaping. I like to be in the kitchen, okay? So right now, there are some things that are fenced in and it is hidden, okay? I don't do yard work. <laughs> <I know. laughs> But what I'm saying, there are some things that are hidden. There are some things that are fenced in right now that God wants to show you. But in order for you to do that, you have to know the person who has access to the gate to be able to let you in so that you can come in and see what is on the other side, the things that are hidden. And it says right here that you do not know. You don't know. You think you may know what's on the other side. You think you may know what's coming up. You think you may know what the answer is or the direction that God is going. But you do not know the timing of God. You do not know the season you're in or when you're going to come out or how long you're going to be in there. But there are some things that God wants to show you. You do not know. It says you do not distinguish. You cannot tell. You do not recognize it. You cannot recognize it because in order for you to recognize something, it has to be revealed to you. In order for you to recognize, you know, it's like one of those things, you know, um, you know, like uh, my, my, my nieces and nephews, you know, um, uh, I could have been like three years ago or something like that. My family, they got together and they sent some pictures and, you know, what was that Facebook or something? Or remember the, um, the family we were looking at, Isabella and uh, RJ and trying to figure out who they were. <laughs> And I was like, who, wait, who's, who's this? And like, wait, who, now this is my own nieces and nephews that I should know, you know, from my sisters and brothers. And I knew some of them and, you know, she knew some of them. And we were like, you know, they look a little different. See, but I didn't recognize them. But I should have recognized them even though it's something I've seen them before. You know, this is my own bloodline, you know, this is the own siblings, you know, from my sisters and brothers. I should recognize them, but I did not recognize them. And it says, 
right here, the things that do not distinguish and recognize and have knowledge of, nor understand. See, the thing about there's some things that we don't know, that we don't understand, that we don't recognize. See, but we have to go to the one who is doing the revealing, and the one that is doing the revealing, it is God. And see, when God is taking us through some things, and when God has us going forth in his name, it is God that he is the one that's going to cause us to understand. It is God, he is the one that's going to call us to cause us to have that knowledge, or that understanding, or that wisdom in the things that he is showing us, you know. That's a great and awesome thing, and I, I tell a lot of people, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, you know, that, that I work with and that I manage, they're like, you know, but how do you know these things about, what, what, why do you know this? And I say, you know, I, I can't really say because chef school only trains you the basics, the fundamentals, the foundation, but after that, you learn by experience. But there are some things that I know that chef school did not teach me. And I say, the only way I can explain it is that it is a gift from God. I did not, I don't know why I understand ratios the way I understand ratios. It just happens. I just know it. I just put my hand to it and I know what to do with it. It's, it's a crazy thing, you know, but that's the best way that I can explain to some people. Because it's like, well, how do you have this knowledge? We had the same years in. What happened? And then I explain it. I give all glory to God because it is God who has given me that wisdom, that knowledge, that understanding. It is God who speaks to me. He's been speaking to me since I was a little child in the kitchen, but I didn't know that was him. I will be in the kitchen, you know, nine and ten years old and trying to doctor up some top ramen. You know, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the seasoning cabinet, but I hear the voice and the voice is like, no, not this one, that one, no, not this one, that one. And then I, I would try to get something else that looks interesting, uh, interesting. And I touch it and I feel like I'm in the wrong and it says no and I can't I get my hands off of it. You know, but it's the same thing today when I know that I want to create something, when I know that I want to do something. It is the spirit of God. He is directing me. But how much more so when it comes to food is he directing me in the things that are spiritual, the things that are eternal? Because there are some things that God wants to do in the lives of his people and he put me right here in my life in this time, in this season to be a minister unto him, to serve under Bishop and Pastor Lewis, to help to feed the sheep. You know, I cannot feed you something that I have not been fed. What I'm saying, if I am not eating from the hand of God, how can I feed you? I cannot feed you if God has not fed me. Because if God is not feeding me, what am I feeding you? It's going to be empty feed. Does that make sense? What is that? My sister used to say, what's for dinner? My mom said, air pudding. Right? <laughs> It's like nothing, right? You know, or, you know, or my mom, you know, when you're hungry, you know, and my mom, I'm hungry. She's a boy, go get a peanut butter spoon, right? You know, but listen, right now, see, when you're hungry and you're desiring something new and you're desiring something fresh and you know that, hey, you're just beginning your faith walk. And sometimes it's like, you know, huh, I guess some people need to hear about the voice of God. It keeps going back. Hey, okay, we're going to talk about the voice of God right now. See, but listen, there are some times, but listen, you, you, okay, 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 yes, sir. Yes, there, there, there's some times that you're going to go through some things that are real and there's so many voices coming in yes look there, there's some voices coming in you, you got voices coming in from the TV you got voices coming in from your phone you got voices coming in you know from, from your friends and family you know you, you, you're seeking counsel from your friends and your family you're, you're seeking counsel from Google you know you're, you're, you're seeking counsel in books and in novels and in, you know, people that have wrote books about books about books because they read other books and they wrote a book about the book. But God says, this is one book that I have written. This is the mirror that I have designed for you to look into. The scripture says that we are to renew our mind right here, right here. It is the word of God because it's the inward man that needs to be renewed day by day by day by day by day. And the spirit says that it's the scriptures that speak. Now, sometimes you're like, Lord, I don't know how to hear from you. Lord, I cannot hear your voice. You know what you need to do? You need to read the word of God because the word of God is God's written counsel. Does that make sense? This is what the word of God, and it is living, and it is alive. And when you get into those situations, the only things that's going to come out of you is what you have put into yourself. Yes, back in the day, I used to have some CDs, some R&B singles. I had some Korean R&B. Yes, I had Korean R&B. Yes, so anyway... <laughs> I had Korean R&B, and so I, I would listen to that. That's about as far as I would go. It's like R&B, you know. But 
it anyway. But listen to that. But yes, I listen to praise and worship. But there was a time when I had to mature. There was a time when I had to grow up. Now, this is just me. I'm not saying you. You just changed. But there's something that was in me that I knew that God wanted to do. And that God needed me to move to a different place. And so what I had to do, I had to get rid of all that other stuff. You come in my car now, all it's going to be is praise and worship. You come to my house, that's all I'm going to listen to is praise and worship. That's the only thing I have comes in. And when the praise and worship is over, sometimes you got to hear a little bit of preaching. You know, because you need a little bit of faith, right? You got to have faith, right? Faith, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And see, but the more the praise and worship comes in and it speaks of and it glorifies God, and the more the preaching comes in and it gives me faith to believe that the word of God is speaking through the man or woman of God, and then that right there all comes together. The praise and worship comes together, and then the word of God comes together, and the praise and worship, and it keeps building and building and building, and then, hey, here comes trials, here comes tribulation. Like, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. Guess what's going to come up out of me? <laughs> I never lost my praise. <laughs> Oh. I never lie. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Those songs start to raise up in you. And when, and when that song's over, hey, through it all, right? I learned to trust in Jesus and I learned and trust in God. And there was one by, called God's Grace by uh, Luther, uh, Luther Barnes, Reverend Luther Barnes, you know, about God's grace and how it brought him through, you know. <laughs> That it is so awesome because those are the types of things that are going to come up, and those are the types of things that are going to speak. Those are the types of messages that will come up. Those are the types of things that are meditate. And when you're on the road and it's early in the morning, late at night, you stuck in traffic, you know, the word of God starts to come back to you, you know. Just like I mentioned before, you know, about that impossible prayer. That was the word of God that Bishop preached. The word of God, it has to come in you. It becomes alive. It becomes to speak. It, it becomes to preach to you, you know, when you need some help because we were stuck. I didn't know how to move to the next point, but Bishop didn't know I was trying to move to the next point. He was just speaking what was in his heart. When he believed what God was saying, but I had to take hold of what Bishop was saying, and I had to take what he said, and I had to take my little shaker out. What was I doing? I was adding my faith to what Bishop had just preached, you know. Hey, adding my faith, what he said, right there. So, believing God, that God was going to hear the prayer that I was asking for and believing for, I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know when it was going to happen. Hey, it could have happened December 31st of this year, but guess what? God would have answered it this year because I was believing for this year. But listen now, I'm telling you now, as you're moving forward in the things of God, and as you start looking back over your life, just remember when you told God, yes, because when I told him yes, I didn't know. That's what's crazy. I didn't know. You know, to me, my yes was 2006. But God had already determined it was before that. He had already chosen me before that. But it took him 2006 to get my attention and and I, I, I'll never forget, and I told you guys that dream before, but to fast forward, uh, I was on my way to Smoky Point, Washington, to the commissary up there. Uh, six o'clock in the morning, I'm just still trying to shake off what God just showed me and what just happened in the dream. And, and on the radio, guess what comes on? Out of glory, yes. <laughs> So you know when you're doing that, you know the tears are coming down now. <laughs> See, but the thing about it, what's good about God, is that it was all a setup. And let me speak about faith for a second. If you turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number one, talk about faith for a second. Hebrews 11, I'm reading out of the Amplified Classic. chapter 1, uh, 11, verse 11. Here in Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, of the things we hope for, do not lose hope for being the proof. It is the proof of things we do not see. It's funny that Faith is a substance, you know. It is the proof. We can't pull it out like an ID and, you know, it can't be verified by no one else but you and God. Like, I, I just believe. You, you, you're the one that carried the conviction in your heart. But here it says, being the proof of the things that we do not see, 
in the conviction of their reality, their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Verse 2, it says, For by faith, trust, and holy fervor, born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. By faith, we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were, fam were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what we see was not made out of things which are visible, prompted, actuated by faith. Abel brought God a better and more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, because of which it testified of him that he was righteous, that was upright, and, and he was upright and in right standing with God. And God bore witness by accepting and acknowledging his gifts. And though he died, yet through the incident, he still speaks. Because of faith, Enoch was caught up and transferred to heaven so that he did not have a, have a glimpse of death. He was not found because God had translated him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received, he received testimony, still on record, that he had pleased and been satisfactory to God. But without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. Faith. Talk about faith for a second here. See, when it comes to faith, and you read about faith and the heroes of faith and all through the scriptures and all through the battles in the Old Testament, how the, the judges, you know, when the spirit of the Lord would come upon them and they would just, you know, have this ability to lead Israel into victory, into battle, you know, that they may be delivered. And, and you look at the faith of Abraham and you look at the faith of Isaac and Jacob and you look at the faith, you know, all through the New Testament, you know, having, you know, eyes of faith, you know, all that right there, it all speaks, you know, but the thing about it, when you hear about the faith, you start to develop a picture, an image, or uh, of how things might be. And a lot of times we have a wonderful, glorious image, right? You know, we got faith in the red carpet that's just gonna roll right out. <laughs> now, let me tell you, there is no red carpet in faith. <laughs> there is no red carpet. <laughs> now, 1 Corinthians, I believe, 12 and 9 or 12 and 7 speaks of the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I, I just look back over God and what he has done and what he has brought me through. But in there it speaks about the gift of faith, the gift of faith. Now, I believe I have a gift of faith. Let me begin to give you some testimony. Because I don't know why, in any other circumstances, there should have been fear, but I didn't have fear. And it's like God was setting me up, setting me up, setting me up over the years and as I got older me and my older brother we talked and and you know we talked so he's only 11 months older than I am and so my, my older brother you know he wanted to go to the University of Washington you know but I didn't know it but years later as we were older he's like I didn't go to the University of Washington because it cost ten thousand dollars a year but if you think about ten thousand dollars a year that's I mean, it's not bad that's actually pretty good I don't know what it costs now but that money back then, <laughs> you know. But he said $10,000 a year, his thinking was, I can't afford that, I can't go to University of Washington. Next year is my time to go to school. I applied, I got accepted at chef school down in Portland, Oregon. That's about as much as I did. And I called, you guys have an apartment available? Yes, okay, thank you, that's about as much as I did. Dad, I gotta go to school. You know, this is, now by this time my mom's passed away. You know, Dad, I gotta go to school. Okay. All right. Ivan. Steph. If I call the kids. <laughs> okay. Get to school. And my thought was, I'm going to school. I didn't sit there and try to figure out, try to find the money. I didn't sit there and try to figure out, you know, nothing else. All I knew is that I was going to go to go to school. I was going to have the money. Now, most schools, if you don't have no financial aid packet and all that stuff situated before you get there, get there. <laughs> but no, 
They received and they accepted me there. And I graduated with honors there, you know, a chef's school. I didn't live on the streets. I stayed right there on Fifth and Alder. My apartment was $292 a month. $292 a month. I didn't like it. <laughs> Pay for an 18-year-old? That, 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 that's serious money at the time. You know? <laughs> but then God also had favor on my life, and I met a friend there at Chef School, you know, who worked at the Clackamas Hotel, and that's how I got hired on the Clackamas Hotel. You know. But you fast forward again, all through time, all through life, but I can't go through everything right now. Whenever it came time to change or to move, I never looked at the finance or the circumstances. Yes, I knew what was there, but I went anyway. And I say it was all a setup for us to come here to Hawaii. And it was amazing because my pastor back home, he, uh, we would have meetings. And, you know, as it came closer, and I, I would start to share it. It's kind of amazing the steps of faith, you know, that, that start to happen. Good church, Bible-believing church, spirit-filled, you know, spirit of God moving there. And, you know, you, you, you want to be there. And, and I remember that as time and time got closer and God was revealing, time was getting closer. But I didn't want to say anything, you know. But the more and more I went to the church, the more and more I felt like I didn't belong. And I'm like, why does it feel like I don't belong? You shouldn't feel like that when you go to church. You shouldn't feel like you don't belong. But God has already been so specific about Hawaii. But I, I learned from my pastor back there, he says, to be patient. And you wait on the Lord. He said, as if God is screaming. He's not saying, let God yell at you. But he said, you wait because you want to make sure that you are hearing from God. He said, God will be specific with you. God was getting specific down to the details. That's the, the things that God was showing me about everything. But when the time come, and I remember that dream where there was, that's why I can explain it, bear with me, there was a white arrow, and that white arrow was going this way, this one direction. And I understood that this was my pastor, and this right here was where they were going. But I got broken off in the middle and moved down here. But it wasn't to be broken off to be alone. I was broken off to be a part of Pacific Revival Center. And see, when God put me over here, God is the only one that can break something up and make it back together as this one unique, perfect piece. See, when I came here, I didn't give a resume to Bishop and Pastor Lewis. And I didn't give them the details and everything else that I could have been doing, so on and so forth, where I was in ministry. I came here with a heart to serve. But through the years, as we know now, the pieces that Pacific Revival Center was doing Find up with the pieces that God is trying to do here at Pacific Revival Center. I am just part of an answer, but together we are all an answer when God has sent us here to Pacific Revival Center. We're not all called here to sit in our seats and just to sit here just to receive the word, but we're all called apart to be a part so that we can come together as one. There are still some pieces that have been broken off in other ministries that need to be put back together here. We are missing those pieces of the puzzle. Whether it is hospitality, whether it is administration, whatever your giftings and your talent is, you have to be connected. You don't have to run out of here. I know we have lives. Yes, we are busy, but we are also the fellowship, but we are also the body of Christ here. And then when God is ready, he puts you here for a specific time and for a specific purpose so that you can become part of Pacific Revival Center so that we can be of the same spirit of faith and we can go ahead and move forward. And so the thing learn about faith and to walk in faith you know it doesn't matter because going back what i was saying about my pastor we would have the meeting now he knows that hawaii is specific you know not specific but it is they say um they, they say it's expensive yeah. I, I can't even say the word <laughs> so you got to be careful because there's a lot of people when you're in faith they're going to want to talk to you see some people want to talk to you so they can ridicule you some people want to talk to you because they just want a good conversation but there are some people that want to talk to you because they want to agree with you in faith you know and that's what my pastor was he just wanted to agree with us because he wanted us to see us move forward but he would ask me those questions you know hey how are the finances you know and the family you know daisy how do you feel about it you know <laughs> We would have those meetings, and you know, she was like, "Hey, let's, let's just go," you know. And so, this is one of those things like we were just let's just go. I didn't have the answers. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the place. <laughs> I didn't have a foothold over here in Hawaii. 
but all I knew that I had to see what was on the other side. And so the thing about when faith gets in you and when faith just gets stirred up in you, the spirit of God in you just kind of just takes that faith and it's almost like he supercharges it when you just kind of just, when you want to sit still and, and, and it looks like, you know what, Lord, are, are, are you sure, Lord? And you're like, you know what? No, 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 I'm not going to have that conversation because there was too many people that told me it was too expensive. There's too many people that ridiculed us. There was too many people that said this was not our time. There was too many people that said, how can you make it when you're not making it there? But see, the Spirit of God takes that faith and he supercharges it and you can't help but to go forward in the things of God and to step forward in faith. So I got on that plane and I came over here and guess what? We're still moving forward right now eight and a half years later and I thank God and I praise God for every day of our life because I can't tell you on paper how we're making it because it's not about us it is God and if you look at that scripture I know I gotta close I know I gotta close but look what God said in Isaiah 46 see see I, I didn't I didn't create myself right I didn't make myself I don't even know where Isaiah is right now okay but he was, <laughs> Isaiah 46 all right see the thing about God right here Yes, Isaiah 46 and 3. I'm going to start at 3 again. It says, listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel who have, up, who have been upheld by me from birth. Upheld by me from birth. Who have been carried from the womb, even to your old age. I am he, even to gray hairs. I got gray hairs now. But anyway, <laughs> gray hairs. I will carry you. And he says, I have made and I will bear. I have made and I will bear. You know, it's so crazy about the things that God has created and some amazing creatures and some amazing animals that God has made and that he has bared. You know, it's a crazy, you know, some of the things, you know, it's, look, what is that, the African antelope? You know, they, they, they can leap 10 feet straight up, right? But they can leap 33 feet out. You know, I'm like, I don't know. Okay, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, but it, you think about all these amazing things about the creatures that God has made. And these are creatures, right? They are not made in his image. They are not made in his likeness. They don't have his spirit within him, but we have the spirit of God within us. And we are made in his image and we are made in his likeness. Now think about the greatness that God has put in us. It is not our greatness, but it is his greatness that he has put in us. But listen, it says that here. I have made and I will bear too long. We have we have caused ourselves to bear too much weight. We have carried too much stuff ourselves and not depending on the spirit of God. That's another thing I had to apologize to the spirit of God for because there are some things you think, Lord, I can handle this much, but Lord, I really need your help with that much. But see, but God wants it all. And when God wants it all, he wants it all. He doesn't mean like he don't want nothing left on the table. Look. God says, give, give me everything right here. So my table's full right now, you know, but God says, give it all. And so, you know what that, and so, you know, what? when my table is open, when I give everything to God, you know what I got time to do? I got time to praise. I got time to worship. I got time to seek God and to seek his face. You ever had a good friend that you haven't talked to in a while? You see those things right here that we carry, they get in the way. And sometimes it's so hard to carry. You know, you gotta carry it. You know, you, you can barely even walk sometimes, you know, try to carry your groceries and chew bubble gum and walk at the same time, but you can't do it. You know, see, but God says, get all that stuff, get it out of your hands, clear the table, clear the death. Right now, it's time to praise, it is time to worship, it is time to give me glory, because listen, we have carried and bared the weight too long. We don't have to do that no more. God says, I have made and I will bear. That means he made you and he will bear the weight that you are carrying. Jesus said, hey, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. So, hey, we got, what's that song? Let go and let go. Yes. <laughs> yes. We have to let go. I, I, we have to let go. I, I mean, yes. it's, you know, it, it's hard, you know, because we're, we're, we're dealing with people, right? And, and people are looking at us, and, and, and a lot of times we forget that, you know, even though we're dealing with people, you know, and even though they're looking at us, we are not the ones that are supposed to bury the weight or the care 
You know, sometimes we think about how we look. Sometimes we think about what people are going to think about us. And that's what it's like when you walk in the faith. Because people look at you kind of sideways. I'm talking about people that's known you. You know, people that know you, right? You know, people that's known you since you was a kid. And then now all of a sudden you're hearing from God. Wait, you, you, you can hear from God to tell you to go there. But you can't hear from God to tell you to move into a house. You can hear from God right now to say, this is what you're going to do. But you can't hear it from God, you know, to get your finances in order. You can hear from God, right, to say, you got to do some great things, but hey, you don't look so great right now. You know, <laughs> yeah, what? what? You, you, you going there with no cars, no nothing, what? No, <laughs> you, you know, you, you sound like you're out of your mind, you know, and you don't know they're ready to take you away in a straight jacket, right? You know, they're, they're ready to bound you up. And see, that's what those people are there for. They're there to bind you up like a straight jacket, you know, but you cannot trust in what they're saying because if you listen to them too long, if you listen to them too long, listen, they're, they're, they're going to, those words, they're going to bind you. And every time you try to move out of that square, you're going to feel like, no, I, I, I got to stay within the square. And you can't, and you're not going to be able to move because it's locked in place right now. But God says, hey, every place where the face of your foot, where, uh, what's that, the sole of your feet, right? Every place that's the sole of your feet walks, right? Sets up, right? Right, you guys know what I'm talking about, Joshua, right? Every place, right? You set your soul to feet. God's going to give that to you. You know, but sometimes God needs you to move. And the only way to move in the things of God is to move forward. Bishop just talk about, hey, we got an offensive armor, right? Nothing right here because God doesn't think we're going to turn tail and run, right? So we got to come and we got to be on the offense, right? We got the sword and the spirit and the word of the God, right? Feet fitted with the preparation of the word of God. That means wherever my feet go, my feet are going to be prepared to pray, to preach, to speak the word of God. And we got the helmet of salvation. I love that one. Don't, don't leave home without your salvation. No, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, but then what I love right there is it's praying in the spirit always, right? With all kinds of prayers and supplications and requests. You know what I'm saying? Praying in the spirit always. You know, now is a great time for 2020 to however long we got to wear this mask. They don't got to worry about why the mask is moving. Maybe you're chewing gum. Maybe you're just talking to yourself. But they don't have to know that you're praying in the spirit. You're in there. You're blessing that place. You're blessing that business. You're praying. You're praying. You're praying. And I got to stop because my time is up. <laughs> I'm just here to encourage you right now. You got to stay in faith. You got to move in faith. You got to use the voice of God. And I told the Holy Spirit, also I'm telling you guys my prayer time, oh my Lord. But anyways, <laughs> Holy Spirit, forgive me because I should have been using you so much more. So much more. Think about it. Just a little piece. Should I go here? Should I go there? You might wear the wrong thing out today. You don't know if you got to run from a fire or <laughs> you don't know what. The things we wear, you know, should I go this way and that way? Yeah, I, I, I'll stop with this because I, I shared this a long time ago about my mom and the Holy Spirit because I, I didn't know, but I always remember it and it always makes me think because I was about 10 or 11, somewhere around there. <laughs> no, I wasn't 10. I was like, somewhere we left. Well, anyway, I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Say 10 or 11, I was in Germany, but we came back from Germany and I'm trying to remember. But I do remember we were on Hilltop heading towards Greater Christ Temple. And then, so when, when, when you're on G Street, you know, you got those streets that only had a stop sign, you know. <laughs> so just driving, you're just a kid, you're just in the car, just driving. And then all of a sudden, my mom goes, and we're like, what happened? But at the same time, we're like, what happened? This car went, and we're like, <laughs> We're like, how did you know, Mom? <laughs> and she said, the Holy Spirit told me to stop. <laughs> and from that day, I can still hear, I'm like, but I didn't hear anything, but she heard it. To me, that's personal because he speaks to me, but yet he's speaking to you. But yet he's speaking to those in China. He's speaking to those in Africa. The Spirit of God is everywhere and he's able to speak to us in our hearts and in our spirits, but he's given us that counsel the scripture says that he will tell us and show us things to come. And from that day, I had desired unwittingly to know the voice of God. <laughs> I wanted that Holy Spirit so that he can tell me too. I wanted to know that voice. But today, I know his voice. And you can know his voice too. Somebody need to hear about hearing the voice of God. I don't know who. But I'm encouraging you right now. <laughs> Just forget about everything that you've heard. 
the things that are causing confusion in your heart and in your spirit. God said, just listen. See, when you get in your quiet time, you got to be quiet before the Lord. Because you can't be running off at the lip and listen to what he's saying to you and what he's speaking to you. You get there, yes, give me petition and prayer, but you must wait upon him. And you wait patiently. But he also says that in the stillness, he's when you know my presence. And when his presence comes, his voice comes. Then it's that voice that gives you peace. You have been looking for an answer. The answer is in him. So whoever you are, you pray, you seek him, you expect that he is going to speak. But you wait on him. He's not waiting on you. You wait on him. He is greater than you are. He knows more than what you know. He knows the things that are about to come up in your life. And he says, you must seek me now. And he says, run, run, run to me now. He says, run. Run before it's too late. He says, run. Pastor, I'm done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Jason. If you hand the mic to Minister Jennifer, please, and Mr. Miley, would you just grab the mic from the back? Um, Pastor Jason was sharing. Thank you so much for that great word. Um, it's ironic that you mentioned that there are songs that resonate in your heart. And generally in the morning, there's a song that pops in my mind that kind of stays with me in the morning. That's why I encourage everyone to, you know, get your music on, get your gospel music on, and Christian music on. The reason I'm asking Minister Jen is two reasons, because I want you to help me sing this song that I woke up with. And then the other thing is, and we have a few minutes, I want Minister Jen to share your testimony on how you heard the voice of the Lord to stay here in Hawaii. And I'm just gonna share that uh, I went back to Detroit a couple weeks ago for my daughter's graduation. Michigan State, go green! Just had to throw that in, but <laughs> anyway. Um, and I was driving around in Detroit, and Detroit is a very nice city. And we were in the suburban areas, and as I drove around, I looked and I'm like, do you wanna move back? And it was like, no. <laughs> Nice houses, nice community, cost of living, not quite as high as it is here, but I didn't belong. And I sometimes God will just shut a door behind you. Have you ever had a job and you began to feel dissatisfied, not quite sure, but you know that it's time to go. And when I went back to Detroit, it was like, there's nothing here for me. I don't fit, as Pastor Jason said. And what, the reason I'm sharing that is because God is speaking to each of us about areas of our life and things that he wants us to do. And the song that woke me up this morning was, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and we'll be atmosphere. Your glory, Lord, is what my heart longs for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Thank you. Your presence, Lord. And sometimes God will wake you up. And I don't know, do any of you ever experience there's just a song that drops in your heart? And I say that to say I encourage everyone, if you have an opportunity to go into service, to be in church, Go for praise and worship. Don't just arrive just before offering of the word, but go for the praise and worship because you may not know the song, but God will drop that song in your heart and it will stay with you and keep you during the day. So that song, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Goes along with what Pastor Jason was preaching about. We need to hear the voice of the Lord. And some of you are wondering in your life, how do I hear the voice? Because I know as a young person, 
uh, when I was in church and wondering, well, how do you hear God's voice? And you begin to learn to hear God's voice. And I've learned that when there's a sense of dissatisfaction, that's when you need to listen more closely to what he is saying. I'm going to ask Minister Jen to come up. I, I know that coming here to Hawaii was not my choice. It was uh, my boss, as I've testified before. And I, I definitely remember the cost being a factor. But once I got here, once I got over the tears of being away from the family, I'm far away, and da 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 da, and so on and so forth, when I got over myself, I began to enjoy being here. And so when I went back, I'm like, this is not home. Hawaii is my home. So I know, Minister Jen, you're a single mom. You were a single mom, still are. Single mom. <laughs> Although Rebecca is. 20? 21. 21, wow. So what was it? The Holy Spirit obviously told you that you were supposed to be here. Can you share briefly? Yes, briefly. Uh, I had came from Iraq and I've been seen uh, during that time, 2006 and seven, with the 28 Combat Support Hospital known as China Dragons. We got extended an extra six months and we also were the most uh, unit that was bombed in Iraq. I lost a good friend of mine uh, Captain Maria Ortiz, we knew each other from when I was a mechanic and dangling from the air assault uh, <laughs> course crying like, look to heels, kind of my health, the God is there. But my Sergeant Major asked us where we wanted to go. He was, he was a minister, he was a pastor also, and he had nothing but staff sergeants. And the first time I met him, he apologized to my husband for divorcing his daughter. And uh, this is in down in Baghdad. So he asked me where I wanted to go. and. I just said, I want to go to Hawaii. I want to build a relationship with my daughter. So this was a created, this was created for me to be here because I wasn't supposed to go anywhere except when I was at Fort Bragg, well, after I left that, then San Antonio to teach. And so when I got over here, I said, we're doing three years. I'm not going minimal ORs. I'm not staying up late. I'm not doing any four o'clock PTs. The young soldier's going to do it. And I want to spend time with Becca. My son didn't come over here, so that broke my heart. And I was already planning on getting married. And But God ha has a wonderful way of doing things. And so I uh, quickly, as I got into operations, the uh, chaplain prayed over me. He was walking and said, I'm going to pray for you because I want to get promoted to make it E7 so I can retire to make money to be able to pay for the bills. She said, you're not going to get promoted in the military. She said, but there's a rock that you have to cross over to education because my credits were always nursing. And I joined back in the military because God said, go back in the military and it was open for me. So I'm like 15 credits shy of going into my nursing degree to start my credits. And it's been 15 years since I've <laughs> But God is good. So with that, um, I had that prayer over me. Uh, I didn't get the promotion. I got looked over again, and I was coming to the church when we was in on uh, Wakamilo, and I was standing there, and uh, Dr. Hazel Hill came to me, and I was crying. I said, I don't know what to do. She said, you know what to do. <laughs> I said, I don't know what to do. She said, you do. She said, you know God wants you to stay here, and this is where you gotta be. And so for a whole week, I kept it to myself, and I had that Sunday, I told Pastor Drew, I said, Pastor Drew, God wants me to stay. And she was so excited. I was like, hey, there's no way I'm going to pay for all this money. I'm just going to trust God. But my best sister, my friend, my buddy, my counsel woman, Minister Michelle, we were riding here coming to the couple A one, and she said, oh, Minister Drew, you don't understand. You got all these privileges. And I said, that's the money. She said, hmm. A dollar in the mainland is like a thousand dollars here. She said, if you look at it that way, God is going to bless you with everything. And when she said that, that just opened up so many. I mean, the fears were leaving, and I knew this is where I wanted to be. Rebecca was a little bit different because she missed her brother. But look, and I tell her now, look what God has done for you. Because I prayed for her to be in the church like I was. Baptist Church and the pastor and the children's ministry and we just had fun and Becca is fulfilling all of that. So I thank God for that. So this was not my first choice. My family is in Arkansas and I wanted San Antonio to be in a big house and not work at all. <laughs> 
But I thank God for what he's done and bringing me here. And then lastly, I wrote a book when I was in middle school, the places I wanted to go. My mother sent it to me before she, her all timers took uh, mostly control over her. And I looked in the back and it said, I wanted to go to a distant land. I wanted to go to Hawaii. I wanted to be in the military. I wanted to have a family. And that was the last voice from her that I heard. Because my mother doesn't call me. But I do know where she is. I know she loves me. So God is good. Amen. Amen. Isn't that Thank good? You. Give God a hand. I hope that encourages you and it encourages me to know that sometimes we don't like what we see in the future, but there's something, Hawaii may be expensive, but God's people do well here. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that we trust him and our life is good here in Jesus' name, amen? And so I want to encourage you right now, but God may be moving you, those that are listening, he may be moving you to another place, but you know there are people that have left here and I know God has moved them because he has something for them to do. But what we're going to ask you is just ask God, would you just ask him to speak to you and show you what he wants you to do and where he wants you to be. There are those that are really significant and coming here to this ministry. Minister Jen, I'm sure she never knew, thought that she would be doing what she's doing, leading praise and worship in such a major role in a ministry. Pastor Jason, maybe the Lord was speaking to you, but somehow he worked it, and now you're one of our assistant pastors. So we're so thankful for that. I see Sister Darlene, Deaconess Darlene. God has a great work for all of us, but he wants to speak to us. And as our, our young people, I'm so proud of our young people that are here and those that listen. God has a plan for each of us, and he does speak to you. And as he was speaking to Minister Jen as a little girl, He's speaking to you as well. He just wants you to listen. If you would just uh, pay attention to that song, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, rain down. Ask God to speak to you. So we're going to close in prayer. You may be in a valley of decision wondering, should I stay here or move? A lot of us are in that mode of, do we stay here? Uh, can I afford to live here? But wherever God has placed you, he will supply your need to be where he wants you to be in abundance and there'll be a sense of peace and a sense of joy. So Father, in the name of Jesus, as we pray, we just ask you to speak to each and every one of us. There are those that are discouraged, wondering, what do I do? What do I do next? But Lord, as Pastor Jason has spoken so eloquently, we just need to ask you. You said you would carry us, you would lift us, you said you would never leave us or forsake us. We just need to hear your voice. I command the spirit of discouragement to leave right now in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of oppression and depression to go in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you have a purpose for each of us and where there is dissatisfaction, Lord, that is you trying to get our attention to let us know that you have something else for us. Lord, we thank you that you have great things for us. The best is yet to come. And your word says, in all things work together for good to those that love you and are called according to your purpose. So as Pastor Jason has shared, we're like in a puzzle. We're part of a, a puzzle. And some of us are here, some of us are there. But you speak to each of us individually. So Lord, let our hearts, let our hearts hear you. Let our ears hear you the direction that you desire us to go. I especially ask you to bless our young people, our children, our grandchildren that are on the way. We bless them right now, and our teenagers, our young people that have an opportunity to hear the word of God. Let them not turn away, but let them hear your voice. And wherever they go, whether they're in our homes or whether they go away, let them continue to hear your voice, even through us. Let them hear your voice, and a stranger they will not follow. We thank you for great evangelists, great teachers, great ministers of the gospel. Through our loins, our descendants will be known among the nations, and our offspring among the peoples. And all who see them will know that we are people whom you have blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said,
Amen and amen. God bless you and aloha. Join us next Sunday at 9.30. Thank <laughs> you.